ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific and to the sixth session on, of the Committee on Social Development. This committee comes at a critical time when our region faces unprecedented social development challenges due to COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past eight months, member states have witnessed reversing hard-won development gains with significant implications on patterns of widening inequality and rising poverty in Asia and the Pacific. Shifting population dynamics are also impacting the way our families, societies, and economies are shaped. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to highlight some key findings of our analysis for social protection in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. Social protection coverage in the Asia-Pacific region is low. ESCAP research shows that across the region, excluding health, many countries in the region spend less than 2% of GDP on social protection. This low level of investment stands in contrast to the global average of almost 11%. Over half the population in the region still lacks access to even one social protection scheme, and only a minor, minority enjoy comprehensive protection. Only a handful of countries have comprehensive social protection systems in our region. Maternity, unemployment, sickness, and disability benefits are the preserve of a minority of workers in the formal economy, leaving 70% of workers locked out of contributory schemes. Lower labor force participation among women accentuates gaps in social protection coverage. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there are three key reasons for the lack of access to social protection scheme in our region. First is informality. Two-thirds of the labor force in Asia and Pacific are informal workers. We need to connect the two agendas of expansion of social protection and tackling of informality to be able to fill the vast gaps. Second is inefficiency. Delivering social protection to vulnerable population is a challenge. A robust civil registration system is needed to correctly include people and families in social protection administration systems. We need advocate for universal schemes. Third is lack of political commitment. Strengthening institutional architecture and sustainable financing modalities are not enough in the region. There is a need to convince policymakers to urgently focus on social protection for all. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ESCAP to, together with ILO has recently launched the first regional report on social protection. The protection we want, social outlook for Asia and the Pacific. The report builds a strong case on the urgent need for comprehensive and inclusive social uh, protection. Our analysis shows that the, the proportion of households living in poverty would fall by up to 18 percentage points if governments were to offer social protection to their population. During this unfolding health and economic crisis due to COVID-19 pandemic, evidence shows that well-managed social protection systems have been far better equipped to respond to, to the unexpected. They are more effective in shielding the most vulnerable population groups and st stabilizing our economies and societies. By establishing basic non-contributory schemes for children, older persons and persons with disabilities, government would need between 2 and 6% of GDP. It is a significant financing requirement, but still fiscally affordable with large socioeconomic benefits. Therefore, to counter the economic fallout from COVID-19 pandemic, many member states have strengthened existing social protection schemes and sometimes introduced new ad hoc measures. In times of socioeconomic crisis, social protection is our society's primary line of defense. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the region faces overlapping global trends that risk compounding social development challenges. Rapid population aging is placing unprecedented challenges both on societies, older persons, and those working. Technological innovation is also reshaping labor markets 
and creating a set of opportunities and challenges. Natural disasters are aggravated by climate change and becoming more frequent and more destructive. Yet, with the right policy interventions, we can mitigate and transform these challenges into strengths and opportunities. These trends are a reminder that we need to integrate population dynamics, sexual and reproductive health, and gender equality into all development strategies. We also need to invest in comprehensive social protection systems and to monitor our progress in achieving relevant targets of the 2030 Agenda to ensure an inclusive, resilient, and prosperous Asia-Pacific. With this background, allow me to highlight two important issues for your further guidance. First, the endorsement of the action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia and Pacific. This has been done as per the request made at the Fifth Committee on Social Development. Second, the endorsement of the Asia-Pacific Indicator Framework. This draws upon the 2018 midterm review of the Asian and Pacific Ministerial Declaration on Population and Development. ESCAP, in collaboration with UNFPA, has developed this indicator framework to monitor progress in implementing commitments made by member states on population and development within the context of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that through your active participation and deliberations, the committee will identify ways to operationalize these two documents and how ESCAP can best support member states on these endeavors. In emphasizing the importance of regional solidarity and partnership, I take this opportunity to thank our partners, ILO and UNFPA, as well as our civil society organizations and other stakeholders for their excellent collaboration. I deeply appreciate your continued trust and commitment in our partnership and engagement. Thank you for your attention. I wish you a very successful committee session. Thank you, Ibu Armida, for your thought-provoking opening statement. Mr. Srinivas Tata, as Secretary of the Committee, may I now invite you to conduct the election of officers. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I now have the honor to conduct the election of officers for the sixth session of the Committee on Social Development. The meeting will elect one chair and one vice chair. I'm now pleased to invite nominations from the floor and also uh, from those participating virtually. The floor is open. I recognize the distinguished representative of Japan. Thank you, Dr. Tata. Uh, the delegation from Japan has the honor to nominate the following bureau for this meeting. For the position of chair, Her Excellency Mrs. Samantha K. Jayasuriya, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Sri Lanka, and permanent representative to ESCAP. For the position of vice chair, uh, Ms. Suzira Binti Modi uh, Siddiq, Minister and Plenip uh, Permanent Representative of Malaysia to ESCAP. We are sure that under the able leadership of this distinguished bureau, all the tasks assigned to us will be uh, achieved successfully. Thank you. I thank the distinguished delegate of Japan. Uh, excellencies and distinguished delegates, the distinguished representative of Japan has nominated the following. For chair, Her Excellency, Ms. Saman Take Jayasurya, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary, and permanent representative of Sri Lanka to ESCAP. For vice chair, Ms. Suzila Binti Mamatsidek, minister and permanent representative of Malaysia to ESCAP. Would any other delegation wish to take the floor? I see online uh, Cambodia has requested for the floor. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Cambodia, please release your mic. nomination made by the delegation of Japan. Can you repeat 
Your statement, please. The delegation from Cambodia would like to second the nomination made by a delegation of Japan. Thank you very much, distinguished delegate of Cambodia. Would any other delegation wish to take the floor? I see none from the floor and none on the Kudo platform. I therefore have the honor of declaring the following delegates elected to the Bureau for this meeting. For Chair, Her Excellency, Ms. Samantha K. Jayasurya, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary and Permanent Representative of Sri Lanka to ESCAP. For Vice Chair, Ms. Suzila Binti Mahmud Sidek, Minister and Permanent Representative of Malaysia to ESCAP. Let us all give a round of applause to the newly elected office bearers. And I have the honor of inviting the chair to take her place at the rostrum, please. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all Bureau members, I wish to express our warm appreciation to the distinguished delegates for the confidence reposed in us. It is indeed an honor and privilege for me to serve as your chair for the sixth session of the Committee on Social Development. I hereby call the conference to order. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the committee's thematic focus on social protection comes at a time when the need for social protection has never been greater in the context of COVID-19. We have seen governments from across the region take concerted, and me concerted measures to address and cushion the socio-economic fallout from the pandemic. As we continue to tread unknown and uncertain grounds, this committee provides an opportunity to forge ways to strengthen social protection as a key instrument for building resilience. The region is facing unprecedented demographic shifts which has resulted profound impact on sustainable development. In addition, COVID-19 has affected all population groups in the region. With those in vulnerable situations at a particular risk of being infected and impacted, such as older persons, women, persons with disabilities, and migrants. This vulnerability is not inevitable. However, calling for a renewed focus on population and development in the short term, take immediate measures to protect these most at risk, and in the long term, to prevent these vulnerabilities arising in the first place. Over the two days, we will deliberate on the need for extending social protection in the region based on the action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection. The committee will also consider the Asia-Pacific Indicator Framework for monitoring progress 
towards the implementation of the program of action of the International Conference on Population and Development and of the commitments contained in the Asian and Pacific Ministerial Declaration on Population and Development. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, the sixth session of the Committee on Social Development is being organized using a hybrid modality, keeping in mind the well-being of all delegates during the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as due to ongoing travel restrictions in many countries in the Asia-Pacific region. While we have a few Bangkok-based delegates joining the session physically, here at the United Nations Conference Center in Bangkok, many are joining us virtually through Kudo or via YouTube. Due to these circumstances, this session of the committee has been condensed to one and a half a day session, which is half of the duration of the usual committee session. We therefore kindly request your cooperation to tailor your interventions to issues directly linked to the agenda items and to keep them limited to no more than three minutes. I thank you in advance for accommodating these requests. Please note that I will be uh, enforcing these time limits so that we can give all delegations the opportunity to speak. Delegations present in the UNCC wishing to take the floor may do so by raising their flag. Delegations who are joining us virtually through KUDO may request the flow using function available in KUDO. Please note that the KUDO chat box is to be used for technical questions only and not for comments. For those wishing to make comments, we request that you press request to speak button in KUDO and make your comment directly to the flow. The secretariat will help compile the speakers list in the order in which the requests have been made both physically as well as virtually. Please bear with us in case there are any delays or technical glitches in view of the extraordinary circumstances in which this meeting is being held. Regarding the report of the committee, only key decisions made during the session will be captured and considered for adoption. Proceedings will be captured separately in the form of a chair summary and annexed to the report after the committee session. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I seek your cooperation in steering this committee session to a successful conclusion within the short time at our disposal. Together and with the able support of my vice chair and the secretariat, we may look forward to a fruitful discussion and achievement of the expected outcomes. We shall now take up agenda item 1C, the adoption of the agenda as presented to you in document SCAP slash CSD slash 2020 slash L.1. Are there any comments on the provisional agenda? which has been circulated well in advance by the Secretariat. Nothing on my side. Right. As there seems to be no comments, the provisional agenda is adopted. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the opening of the conference. I will now proceed to agenda item two of today's agenda. Agenda item two, consideration of the action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on 
social protection in Asia and the Pacific. Before we begin, we will have a short video highlighting the key findings of this year's flagship publication, The Social Outlook, entitled The Protection We Want, Social Outlook for Asia and the Pacific. As many of you know, this report was recently launched by the Executive Secretary and the Director General of ILO on 15th October. Uh, I will now invite the Secretariat to play the video. Social protection is first and foremost a human right. Anchored in human rights instruments, social protection schemes provide cash or in-kind support for people facing social and economic risks. Social protection is also society's immune system. The COVID-19 crisis has again demonstrated how a well-functioning social protection system protects individuals and economies, acting as a stabilizer in times of crisis. The pandemic is aggravating existing underlying ills. The region's gains in economic growth over the past few decades have not translated into equivalent gains in the population's well-being. Along with the pandemic, several overlapping global trends are at work. Population aging, migration, urbanization, technological progress, disasters and climate change. Social protection schemes are key to adapting to these disruptions. Well-resourced social protection systems built over time can help respond to the unexpected and shield the most vulnerable. But critical gaps in social protection are undermining this immune system. Despite their rapid socio-economic ascent, most countries in the region have weak social protection systems filled with gaps. 55% have no social protection coverage at all. Poverty-targeted schemes fail to reach the poorest families. Benefits often only reach workers with a formal job. The majority of the population are covered for old age, but pension benefits are low. Over 25% of the population does not have any health care protection. Why do these gaps in the provision of social protection schemes exist? There is significant underinvestment in social protection programs. On average, public spending on social protection in the region, excluding health, is 7% of GDP, which is lower than the global average of 11%. Other factors include informality and weak administrative structures. Investment in a basic social protection package would have immediate impact on poverty, inequality and purchasing power. Regional simulations of recipient households show poverty would drop by up to 18 percentage points. Recipient households would also see a boost in their purchasing power between 7 and 24 percent. This investment is within reach for most countries. Social protection requires a significant but affordable increase in public social protection expenditure. Estimations range from 2 to 6.1 percent of GDP. In addition to investing more in social protection, governments need to embed social protection in the core of national economic and social development agendas and allocate more resources. 
build universal social protection systems. Achieve this with a mix of contributory and non-contributory benefit schemes. In building universal protection systems, leave no one behind. Make efforts to include migrants and forcibly displaced individuals and families, ethnic minorities and those living in urban informal settlements or in remote areas. Provide social protection to women throughout their lives. Accelerate efforts to create formal jobs and expand social protection to informal workers. Ensure greater coherence and integration of social protection to better cover the missing middle. Improve efficiency and effectiveness through emerging technologies. Tailor responses to the context. Specific actions are required at the national level, depending on the level of coverage of existing schemes and the broader socio-economic context. There is potential for us all to steer emerging trends towards a socio-economically stronger region and achieve the ambitions of the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. This year, the Sixth Committee on Social Development provides the platform for the region's government representatives to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection. I thank the Secretariat for this uh, inf very informative video and for the excellent report produced jointly with ILO. I believe that this report will be of significant importance as we strive to extend social protection to all. I now have the pleasure to invite Mr. Srinivas Tata, the Director of the Social Development Division of SCAP, to deliver a presentation on this agenda item. You have the floor, Mr. Tata. Thank you, Madam Chair. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, We'll just wait for the presentation to come online. It is my pleasure to present an overview of agenda item two on the consideration of the draft action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia and the Pacific. Before I do so, I'd like to highlight two key findings from our report, Social Outlook for Asia and the Pacific, named the protection that we want. The video that you just saw captured the key findings. And this report, as you know, was jointly produced by ILO's regional office and was launched uh, last Thursday. Next slide, please. First, the first message is social protection coverage is generally low across the region. Although we have seen some progress over the past decade, more than half of all people in the region are not even protected by one social protection scheme. Social protection coverage is generally higher in North and Central Asia and Northeast Asia, and the reasons for this low coverage are strongly related to under uh, investment in social protection, as you can see in the next slide. Next slide, please. Spending on social protection across Asia-Pacific is low. We know that many countries in the region continue to spend less than 2% of the GDP on social protection. The average spending in the region of 7% is lower than the global average of 11%, and the European average is closer to 18% of the GDP. And this underinvestment is a symptom of the low priority social protection is accorded in national budgets and policy making, and also hampers efforts to uh, under uh, underinvestment also effort, hampers the efforts that we are making to strengthen administrative hurdles and creating better functioning and comprehensive social protection systems. Next slide, please. I would also like to brief you on the consultation process that we undertook in the drafting of this draft action plan. As you know, social protection had gained much visibility and traction uh, over the past few months as a critical policy response to the COVID-19 pandemic. But even before the pandemic, the Committee on Social Development had recognized social protection as a priority for the region. The regional action plan that you see before you is a culmination of two years uh, process of review and consultation with our member states to identify key actions to strengthen social protection. First, following the request of the fifth Committee on Social Development, the Secretariat uh, uh, convened a group consisting of officially nominated representatives of members and associate members to provide guidance and input on the content and format of this modality. 
All SCAP member states were invited to join the group to a call for nominations in effect uh, from uh, February to April 2019. As of 11 June 2019, 18 official nominations uh, representing all five SCAP subregions had been received. There were two in-person consultations held with this group and three draft revisions were shared for comments. Uh, the meetings were held in June 2019 and November 2019. The draft action plan was prepared based on the guidance received from these consultations and submitted for the consideration of the Commission at its 76th session. The Commission uh, requested the committee to review the action plan at its sixth session uh, because of uh, the exigencies of the situation that existed during the Commission. It is through this comprehensive review process that the action plan is presented today for your review and endorsement. Next slide, please. The action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia Pacific is a voluntary guiding document to promote social protection for all with a view to support the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The action plan provides a shared vision, strategy, and a platform to promote partnership, peer learning, and sharing of good practices, as well as identify needs for technical assistance that states may have. The document suggests core minimum measures, taking into account national circumstances on actions to promote comprehensive and inclusive social protection to build more resilient and prosperous societies. These measures were all arrived through consultation with representatives from member states as just described. We are therefore, next slide please. Uh, we are therefore pleased to present this action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia and the Pacific, detailed in document SCAP slash CSD slash 2020 slash 1, as per decision 76 slash 7, uh, taken at the 76th session of the SCAP Commission session, and recommendation 2 of the 5th session of the Committee on Social Development in 2018. We would kindly request distinguished delegates to review uh, with a, an endorsed action plan with a view to providing advice on follow-up. We look forward to your intervention on how we can take this action plan forward to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Tata, for your comprehensive overview of uh, social protection trends in the region, which provides an important backdrop in deliberating on this agenda item, namely how to strengthen our collaboration on social protection. The background document for this agenda item is SCAP slash CSD slash 2020 slash 1 titled Action Plan to Strengthen Regional Cooperation on Social Protection in Asia and the Pacific. As mentioned by Mr. Tata, in his presentation, this background document has been developed in response to the recommendation of the fifth session of the Committee on Social Development to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection and its suggestion to explore and develop a modality for regional cooperation in this regard. The draft action plan has undergone several consultations and was developed through a group consisting of official representatives of members and associate members. The commission at its 76th session took note of the document and requested the committee to review the action plan and provide advice on its follow-up as appropriate. The action plan will provide governments in the Asia Pacific region with a shared vision strategy and platform for promoting partnership, peer learning, and the sharing of good practices, as well as for identifying needs for technical assistance. The action plan is presented to members and associate members today as a guide between now and 2030 to take action for social protection on a voluntary basis and in line with national circumstances. As the action plan has been through various rounds of consultation by the group of officially designated experts, it is presented with a view to your endorsement 
and to providing the Secretariat with guidance on its operationalization. With this background, I have the pleasure now inviting uh, the delegates to take the floor to share their views. The, the list of speakers uh, is open and I would kindly invite the member states to uh, register uh, for taking the floor. I recognize the distinguished delegate from Republic of Korea. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by joining others in con congratulating Her Excellency Samantha K. Jasriya on her election as the chair of the six sessions of the Committee on Social Development. We look forward to your good and able leadership. Madam Chair, on behalf of the Korean delegation, I would like to express our appreciation to the ESCAP Secretariat for the drive to develop this action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in our region. It will indeed be a good uh, inspiration to all members, member states in realizing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and our collective vision of leaving no one behind. In this regard, I would like to share our country's efforts on some priority areas linked to the action plan. Over years, the Korean government has implemented a variety of social protection policies with the goal of an inclusive welfare state, ensuring the basic standard of living and raising overall quality of life for all citizens. Specifically, the, na the National Basic Livelihood Security Program is the core pro uh, public assistance program for the poor. In order to ensure the national minimum living standard for all people, the coverage level of the program has been consistently improved. And with the view that social security measures should reflect the real condition of the people. The strict eligibility standard on uh, caregivers has been phased out as many, as many have pointed out that it reduces the, ch the chances of people in need of assistance becoming beneficiary. For valuable uh, population groups such as the elderly and the, the and the disabled, the Korean government is providing a solid base of stable livelihood by gradually increasing the level of basic pension benefits of the basic old age pension and the disability pension. In support of children's healthy development, the Korean government shoulders more responsibility in child rearing by continuously expanding the coverage of child allowance, which was introduced in 2018. From 2020, children under seven would also be eligible, which is expected to increase the benefit target from 2.47 million to 2.63 million kids. Furthermore, 
The community care program provides integrated support for housing, medical treatment, daycare, and independent livelihood in order to let those in need of care, such as the elderly and the people with disability, receive proper social service in their local community. Lastly, with the recent ongoing need for a more comprehensive system to, uh, to support income and care in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Korea government will burst the social security net, making it more inclusive by introducing the sickness benefit through the K New Deal plan. In this context, the Korean delegation would like to propose some amendments in Article 22G, 1, 2, 3, by sex and age, to include various valuable groups in addition to sex and age, it would be more appropriate to adopt the original context from the indicator framework of sustainable development goal 1.3.1, which is bisex this anti <coughs> this institution uh, children unemployed persons old persons persons with disabilities pregnant women newborn work inquiry victims and the poor and the valuables but i'm sure we are now dealing with the global social economic crisis presented by the economic recession from the COVID-19 pandemic and the labor market re restructuring due to a fourth industrial revolution. The Republic of Korea fully agrees that national governments should take more responsibility for social protection and regional cooperation should be strengthened to tackle the emerging risks and vulnerabilities in our region. Thank you. I thank the distinguished delegate from uh, Republic of Korea and for his uh, comment on uh, the uh, document. I hope the uh, other delegates also and the Secretariat has noted it. Uh, and at the same time, uh, may I also request uh, all the uh, member states who are joining us virtually uh, to keep registering and the Secretariat is uh, taking good note of it. In that, uh, I would now like to invite uh, the distinguished delegation of uh, Timor Lesete, which is uh, joining us virtually, to be followed by uh, the delegation of Sri Lanka, who is going to jo join uh, physically at the meeting. Uh, do we know that the uh, delegation of Timor Lesete is connected at this moment? Yes, uh, the delegation of uh, Timor Lesete. Good morning and welcome to the uh, sixth session. You have the floor. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and, and all delegates. Uh, let me share Timor Lesete's effort to put everyone in the picture to share protection for everyone. Since independence in 2002, Timor Lesete has struggled daily to recover from the previous decade of com conflict and create the condition for its citizen to have a good quality of life. Despite the advance made, many challenges remain. Extensive, extensive uh, poverty, nutrition deficit, and equal access to health care, decent work and protection against social risk. Social protection is a right granted by the national constitution. It is an important element for cohesion and social peace. The government continue its commitment to review the policies and programs to respond to the current challenge, COVID-19 and other related issues. The pandemic has brought devastating consequences to the world developed 
to the world develop and developing countries. Responding to that, the government has has a follows all the WHO are measured to prevent COVID-19. Recently, the government has launched its economy recovery plan, center of the people, which help reactive the national economy with measure for the short, medium, and long term. Furthermore, in in October, recently, the government have approved the state budget, total amount of 1.497 million. And from total budget, from the total budget, 29% will be allocated to social protection, social capital, social welfare, social protection citizens. The government had decided to invest in social capital for investing and focus on the following areas. Construction of housing for vulnerable people and veterans, investing in water and sanitation, construction of health centers and health ports, construction of schools and classrooms, and constructing to this contribution to the social security scheme and et cetera. On the, on the way forward, the government through the Minister of Social Solidarity and Inclusion will continue its effort and commitment to ensure good management and strengthening of the integrated social protection systems by promote and protect the right of the child, promote social rehabilitation and counseling and recovery, ensuring quality service to citizens in situation of in situation of social vulnerability through the implementation of the social protection, social assistance, rehabilitation and social security at national and municipal level. Promote community integration inclusion initiatives, implement gender policy and promote good governance, institution management in the ministry and strengthening institution and increasing the capital capacity of human resources. Finally, Timor Leste support the draft action plan and continue to strengthening its cooperation, its development with the development partners and all relevant stakeholders to seek support to help the government afford to build sustainable and reliable social protection system and to achieve sustainable development goal. I thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much uh, to the distinguished delegate from uh, Timor Leste for providing an uh, insight on what's happening in the national level. I will now uh, invite the delegation of Sri Lanka to be followed by the delegation of Philippines that is going to connect to us virtually. Sri Lanka, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I wish to convey the best wishes for the Bureau for a fru fruitful session. Sri Lanka recognizes the importance of the action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia and the Pacific, which has become pivotal than ever before in the context of COVID-19 health pandemic. It is understood that the draft action plan has already gone through several rounds of negotiations at the meetings of designated experts. Sri Lanka wishes to bring to the attention of the committee and the member states that the action plan was developed and negotiated in 2019 at a time when no one of us heard the word COVID-19. It is pertinent to note that the 36, 76th commission held in May 2020 has referred back the action plan to the sixth, sixth session of the Social Development Committee with a view to providing advice on the follow-up as appropriate. However, following the submission to the 76th commission, it is observed that only the introductory text of the action plan has been slightly revised, reflecting the necessity of all inclusive social protection mechanism in an unprecedented pandemic situation like COVID-19. Having recognized the practical difficulties of renegotiating a text when physical meetings are limited and will not guarantee inclusive consultations, Sri Lanka wishes to flag importance of accomplishing the actions at regional level stipulated in Para 23, given that post-COVID-19 has negative impacts, including the reduction of financial allocations, limitations in conducting physical meetings, travel restrictions to continue for the coming years. 
For instance, in Para 23, it is mentioned that the Secretariat, in collaboration with relevant UN agencies, should facilitate member states to consolidate national experience into periodic progress reports, develop regional platforms to member states to facilitate peer learnings and share experience and provide technical advice and capacity building supports. It is observed that, that following the COVID-19, not only the UN agencies, but also the individual member states will encounter severe economic recession where the recovery is going to be long term. In this context, the time allocated for regular meeting sessions has already been reduced and there is not even adequate time to share experience, at least by way of country statements, side events, and interactive dialogues, etc. Therefore, it is observed that the Secretariat activities in supporting member states to implement the action plan will also be subjected to limitations. As a country that successfully contained COVID-19, despite the recent spike of the cases arisen in the country, Sri Lanka has been guaranteeing a greater degree of action in social protection with universal access to free education and health care, as well as pension scheme for elders and special care for vulnerable and differently abled groups. It is pertinent to note that Sri Lanka is a state party to co all core human rights conventions and Sri Lanka has been maintaining low un unemployment rates as 4.8% uh, in 2019, which has now decreased due to earning and job losses, and 70% of informal workforce are particularly vulnerable, resulting significant welfare implications in the post-COVID-19 situation. The government of Sri Lanka has granted financial reliefs to over 6 million affected families and vulnerable people covering all affected groups in the country. A COVID-19 health care and social security fund has been set up to strengthen the mitigation activities to control the COVID-19 spread and social welfare programs. Sharing experience in the region on supporting the COVID-19 affected vulnerable countries and societies could accelerate their return to normal. However, accelerating progress towards achieving 2030 agenda within the decade of action will depend mostly on socio-economic resilience of the member states. Sri Lanka observes that realization of the action plan on social protection achieving its core objectives in the post-COVID-19 decade will be challenging for member states and it is important to create a dynamic regional platform for peer learning and share experience. In this context, Sri Lanka wish to mention that the action for social protection by the member states have to be reprioritized as short-term and long-term actions, and given this action plan is flexible to implement and report progress on voluntary basis, Sri Lanka wishes to support endorsing the action plan and move, moving forward its pragmatic follow-up, which is key. Thank you. I thank the distinguished delegate from Sri Lanka and for the comments shared. I have the pleasure now inviting uh, the distinguished delegation of Philippines, which is going to join us virtually, to be followed by the distinguished delegation from India, also going to join us virtually to be ready after that. Philippines, good morning, and you have the floor. Yes, Philippine is connected. You have the floor, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Madam Chair, the Philippine government recognizes the vital role of social protection as an enabler for all countries in pursuing the 2030 agenda. In our updated Philippine Social Protection Operational Framework and Strategy, social protection aims to promote equity, social cohesion, nation building, disaster risk reduction and management, and human capital formation. Anchored on this framework, the updated Philippine Development Plan highlights the strategies to address the concerns of the most vulnerable members of the community, the women and children and out-of-school youth, informal sector workers, solo parents, 
farmers and fisher folks, and persons of diverse sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. The strategies are risk-based and focus on enhancing the access of all individuals to social protection services to enable their full participation in socioeconomic activities. Social protection measures have contributed to the reduction of poverty in the Philippines. Among notable measures are the conditional cash transfer program, the creation of the National Commission of Senior Citizens, the expansion of coverage of social pension, the expansion of the health care program, now making it universal in coverage, and the provision of unemployment benefits under the amended Social Security Law. We recognize that social protection systems need to be flexible and responsive to the pandemic and other emergencies, and this should be aimed at strengthening the resilience of the vulnerable sectors against the adverse impacts of the crisis. At the onset of the pandemic, we undertook a whole of society approach with policies on clear and transparent communication, interventions to mitigate losses, and programs towards safe and relevant implementation during the new normal. We enacted laws that improved the capacity of our health system while ensuring social protection to those drastically affected by the pandemic. Among these are the social amelioration program, wage subsidies, cash for work program, extension of loan and rent payments, hazard pay, extension of health benefits to cover COVID-19 related expenses, and subsidies for the health expenses of health workers. To improve food security, we ensured an adequate and unimpended access to food supply by providing direct links between markets and products, promoting small scale planting, and providing food and other basic necessities to high risk groups. The government also prioritized the management of malnutrition through food supplementation, fortification, and feeding programs. Lastly, we endeavor to enhance social protection systems by digitalizing delivery mechanism, information, and database management through establishing registry of vulnerable populations, implementing the national identification system, digitalizing cash transfers, institutionalizing social protection floor, and drafting the social protection code for localized implementation. Madam Chair, we support the objectives of the draft action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in our region. We recommend flexibility in modifying respective social protection programs and digitalize delivery mechanisms to respond effectively during emergencies. We are one with ESCAP member states in protecting the welfare and total well-being of every citizen, especially the most vulnerable. Thank you very much and good morning. I thank the distinguished delegation, delegate from Philippines uh, for sharing the national uh, actions that are going on and also sharing the importance of whole of government as well as bringing in uh, digital uh, technology to uh, better delivery. I have the pleasure of inviting now the distinguished delegation from uh, of India which is going to join us online to be followed by the distinguished delegation of China uh, which is going to join physically at this uh, UNCC. Uh, delegation of India, good morning. You have the floor. Honorable uh, Madam Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think I am audible. Am I audible? We can hear you. Please go ahead. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. 
Let me start by offering India's best wishes for the efforts of the Bureau on this important issue of social protection. India is on sound footing to address social disadvantage on account of its deep democratic and egalitarian ethos and institutional outlook. With a powerful constitution, India has a robust policy and legal framework, as well as a long tradition of sound jurisprudence to offer all communities and social groups safe, dignified, and productive life with access to equal opportunities for both growth and development. Policies and programs on social protection are a crucial part of India's national development agenda, which is mirrored in the sustainable development goals and predicated on leaving no one behind. An array of policies and laws, as well as government programs and schemes, protect various vulnerable communities and groups, such as underprivileged women, children, persons with disabilities, the elderly and others from discrimination and violence and enable them to pursue their social, economic and cultural rights. The national education policy specifically addresses the needs of the socioeconomically disadvantaged groups and a range of programs ensure educational access to girls, children with special needs and those from marginalized communities to community mobilization, residential accommodation, nutritional support, scholarships, targeted coaching and counseling, and other teaching learning support. Through rural employment guarantees, skill development, financial inclusion, credit assistance, and entrepreneurship development, sustainable livelihoods are promoted. Labor legislation and allied schemes protect minimum wages, provide for equal, non-discriminatory remuneration, compensation against injury and disabilities, as well as protection of rights of migrant labor. Ayushman Bharat, the National Health Protection Program, provides substantial insurance coverage, improves equity in healthcare, eliminates exclusionary practices, and extends health security to various vulnerable communities. Affordable schemes of life and disability insurance now widely cover vulnerable sections of people. Social pension schemes have been diversified to significantly improve outreach for people suffering from old age, disability, dereliction, and destitution. With the help of a comprehensive combination of policies, legislations, development programs and schemes, social protection benefits are sought to be extended to women and children from all sections of society across the life, uh, life cycle. People living with HIV are linked up with social protection schemes through care and support centers. And all these different communities have been actually taken care of through, these, uh, through various modified schemes and provisions uh, during this COVID pandemic, which is creating a lot of difficulties, particularly for the vulnerable community. India appreciates the draft action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia and the Pacific as an integral part of its commitment to promote regional efforts to achieve the SDG. At the national level, the efforts at social protection are essentially multi-stakeholder affairs. The role of civil society, academia, research institutions, and the private sector are very important. At the same time, it is important to promote the participation and leadership of the representatives of the vulnerable communities in the initiatives in order to improve impact as well as accountability of the measures taken. So there has to be adequate space for this in this uh, you know, schema of things that we are promoting. Peer learning and sharing of good practices at the regional level would be a very useful uh, to facilitate innovation and insight building. Region-wide research programs on specific issues or intervention areas can help generate new data and resources which can enrich interventions both at national and regional level. Operationalization of this action plan holds a lot of promise for improving social protection initiatives both at national and regional level. Going forward, it can open many doors to new solutions to old problems in this region. India looks forward to very forbearance and collaborative action on all these fronts. With this, I would like to conclude and thank you, Madam Chair, for this opportunity to participate in the discussion. Thank you very much. I thank the distinguished thank delegation uh, from India for sharing uh, the broad-based national implementation policies and also the strong legal framework, community mobilization experiences. I now have the honor to uh, invite the delegation of China to be followed by the delegation of uh, Russian Federation. 
the distinguished delegation of China. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. 尊敬的主席女士、各位同事，首先，中国代表团祝贺主席女士当选本届会议主席，相信在您的领导下，会议将取得更大成功。呃，同时，我们祝贺联合国亚太经社会举办此次社会委员会会议。在当前疫情全球蔓延、世界经济陷入衰退、社会可持续发展面临严峻挑战之际，此次会议意义重要。今年是联合国成立七十五周年。各国领导人在刚刚举办的系列高级别会议上，强烈呼吁坚持多边主义，加强团结合作，以2030年可持续发展议程为蓝图，不让任何人掉队。亚太地区是全球经济社会发展的引擎，中方认为亚太国家应在以下几方面加大社会保护努力：一是加强多边和区域合作，我们应坚持维护。以联合国为核心的国际体系，反对单边主义、保护主义，秉持开放包容理念，以合作带动社会发展，让发展成果惠及不同国家、不同阶层、不同人群，切实提升人民福祉和社会保护水平。二是继续努力落实2030年可持续发展议程的社会指标。应平衡推进2030年可持续发展议程社会发展中减贫、社会保护和充分就业这三个目标，将减贫作为社会发展的基础，将促进就业作为优先目的，将消除歧视和不公正待遇作为实现包容性增长的重要方向。三是特别关注弱势群体，在刚刚结束的联合国大会纪念北京世界妇女大会二十五周年高级别会议上。中国国家主席习近平提出要帮助妇女摆脱疫情影响，让性别平等落到实处，推动妇女走在时代前列，加强全球妇女事业合作等主张。我们亚太国家要携手努力，格外关心妇女、老龄人、残疾人等困难群体，建设一个免于被歧视的世界，打造一个包容发展的社会。主席女士。各位同事，中国政府重视社会发展，将民生作为工作的出发点，在减贫、就业、卫生等领域取得巨大成就。中国人民经过艰苦卓绝的努力，有效控制住疫情，实现经济复苏。中国第三季度实实现百分之四点九的经济增长，全年经济增长已由负转正，这将为促进亚太区域及全球经济复苏提供重要支持。中方。已宣布正式加入新冠肺炎疫苗实施计划，以实际行动促进疫苗的公平分配，确保为发展中国家提供疫苗，为实现疫苗在发展中国家的可及性和可负担性做出中国贡献。中国推动绿色“一带一路”建设，努力实现高标准、惠民生、可持续，让“一带一路”成果更好惠及亚太国家人民。中国支持。加强社会保护、区域合作，将一如既往积极支持 ASCAP 开展社会发展领域的工作，继续利用中国 ASCAP 合作基金支持 ASCAP 在老年人、残疾人、性别平等方面的务实合作。中国将与亚太国家共同努力，促进社会的可持续发展。中方支持各成员国通过社会呃保障行动计划，加强亚太区域社会保护、区域合作，也愿就此继续广泛听取各国意见。谢谢主席女士。I thank the distinguished delegate of China for uh, its valuable thoughts on uh, bringing multilateral systems and also highlighting the commitments undertaken on welfare of women, among others. I have the pleasure of now inviting the distinguished delegation of Russian Federation to take the floor. To be followed by the distinguished delegation of Cambodia, going to be joining us online. Uh, the Russian Federation, you have the floor, sir. Уважаемая госпожа председатель, в первую очередь хотели бы подтвердить нашу высокую оценку роли комитета ИСКАТА по социальному развитию, продвижении инициатив, направленных на преодоление социального неравенства и улучшение положения наиболее уязвимых групп населения Азиатско-Тихоокеанского региона. Мы неизменно рассматриваем работу комитета в качестве уникальной региональной площадки для обмена межгосударственным опытом и идеями по наиболее актуальным вопросам <coughs> sorry, социальной защиты. 
Нынешняя сессия комитета проходит в принципиально новых условиях, когда ситуация с распространением новой коронавирусной инфекции в мире развивается в русле негативных сценариев. В ряде государств резкое ухудшение эпидемиологического фона потребовало от правительств повторного ужесточения ранее ослабленных мер сдерживания коронавируса, включая возврат к дистанционным формам работы и обучения, усиление масочного режима, запрет на проведение массовых мероприятий. Как и ранее, шаги в в направлении карантинных рестрикций соизмерялись со стремлением минимизировать рецессию собственных экономик, по возможности амортизировать ее негативное воздействие на наиболее уязвимые слои населения. В каких-то странах Азиатско-Тихоокеанского региона меры социальной поддержки населения были адаптированы к новой ситуации. Но это не означает, что мы можем позволить отказаться от целей, поставленных в сфере социального развития. Наоборот, необходимо быстрее ли реализовывать их на практике, чтобы поддержать население региона и скатом. Исходим из того, что план действий по укреплению регионального сотрудничества в области социальной защиты в Азиатско-Тихоокеанском регионе будет служить действенным рамочным инструментом, позволяющим преодолеть социальное неравенство и придать вопросам социальной защиты населения региона дополнительный импульс в интересах достижения всех соответствующих целей установок повестки 2030. Уважаемая госпожа председатель, полагаем полезным наладить широкий обмен опытом стран Азиатско-Тихоокеанского региона в поддержании функционирования систем соцзащиты в условиях пандемии. Можно было бы подумать о проведении в предстоящем году под эгидой комитета соответствующих коллоквиумов на уровне профильных экспертов. Правительство Российской Федерации в непростой экономической ситуации сохраняет безусловную приверженность повышению уровня социальной защиты российских граждан и росту их благосостояния. Неукоснительно соблюдается выполнение социальной гарантии и осуществляются шаги по преодолению имущественного неравенства и сокращению бедности. Важным элементом социальной политики России является оказание государственного содействия программам увеличения занятости, повышения производительности и качества труда стимулирование развития малого и среднего бизнеса, а также обеспечение роста реальной заработной платы и пенсии, расширение систем социальной защиты. Государственные гарантии адресной социальной поддержки, в том числе такие, как ежегодная индексация пенсии и пособий, нашли отражение в обновленном тексте Российской Конституции. В Российской Федерации предпринимаются целенаправленные меры по улучшению положения людей, относящихся к наиболее уязвимым социальным группам. Данным категориям граждан является повышенное внимание, что созвучно рекомендациям и подходам всей системы ООН. В деле поддержания гендерного равенства особое внимание уделяется вопросам обеспечения экономического и социального статуса женщин, полной реализации женщинами своего потенциала путем оптимального сочетания семейной и профессиональной жизни. Важное место в деятельности государства на социальном направлении занимает оказание материальной поддержки пожилым людям – Меры по сохранению их здоровья, преодоление периода посильной трудоспособности и вовлечение пенсионеров в жизнь общества. В данном контексте важное значение имеет реализация правительством России и Мадридского международного плана действий по проблемам старения. Данный документ рассматривается нами как основной международный правовой инструмент в области защиты прав и интересов пожилых людей. Первостепенное значение придаем вопросам поддержки института семьи с акцентом на содействие малоимущим семьям и помощь молодым семьям, а также на укрепление социальных функций семьи. Считаем благополучие и прочность традиционной семьи одной из главных предпосылок социальной стабильности общества. В текущем году общий размер так называемого материнского капитала увеличен почти до 8 тысяч долларов США. Право на материнский капитал семья получает уже при рождении первого ребенка. С 1 января следующего года сумма материнского капитала будет также увеличена. Уважаемая госпожа председатель, нельзя не сказать несколько, несколько слов о таком важнейшем компоненте соцзащиты, как здравоохранение. Пандемия новой коронавирусной инфекции выступила катализатором трансформационных процессов в системе здравоохранения. На первый план вышли проблемы в регулярности и полноте предоставления населению плановых лечебных и профилактических мероприятий что стало серьезным вызовом, требующим гибкости и качественного укрепления систем здравоохранения Азиатско-Тихоокеанского региона. Российская Федерация принимает самое активное участие в глобальных и региональных усилиях по борьбе с COVID-19. 
оказывая помощь наиболее пострадавшим государствам как на двусторонней основе, так и по линии многосторонних форматов. Накопленный научный и производственный потенциал, а также клинический опыт российских врачей позволили оперативно разработать линейку тест-систем и медицинских препаратов для выявления и лечения коронавируса, а затем зарегистрировать первую в мире вакцину «Спутник Ви». Готовы и дальше делиться накопленным опытом и развивать взаимодействие со всеми заинтересованными структурами, включая поставки российской вакцины, докажавшей свою надежность, безопасность и эффективность. Задействование всех имеющихся мощностей фарм-индустрии позволит в обозримой перспективе обеспечить свободный доступ к вакцинации для граждан всех государств. Уважаемая госпожа председатель, в завершении хотели бы подчеркнуть, что только коллективными усилиями возможно переломить негативные тенденции, с которыми сталкиваются государства СКАТа на социально-экономическом треке и выйти на путь устойчивого развития. Готовы активно работать вместе со всеми партнерами во имя достижения этих целей. Благодарю за внимание. За внимание. I thank the distinguished delegate of Russian Federation, uh, also among other highlighting the importance of keeping track of uh, social protection amidst crisis and also in the uh, inevitable changes of demography in many of our countries and also highlighting the importance of having a platform, a suitable platform to share uh, experiences. I now have the uh, honor to uh, call upon the uh, distinguished delegation of Cambodia who is going to join us virtually and for the interest of the others to follow uh, I will announce the names uh, Bangladesh, Armenia and Afghanistan in that order have registered online so I would also invite them to be prepared. Now uh, I will invite the delegation of Cambodia. Good morning Cambodia. First, I'd like uh, to thank uh, UNESCOP on continuing on organizing the session today, especially to the Social Development Division, uh, Mr. Sinovat Kata, Mr. Patrick Addison. I think both of you have been the backbone of uh, our work today, especially for this uh, action plan on uh, the social protection within our Asia Pacific. I and uh, as a Cambodian delegation, I was able to chair a consultation session uh, for our meeting uh, since June last year. Uh, what we come to realize that we definitely need, uh, we need this action plan today to come forward for the, our committee to consider. It was that I, I believe that the moment that we found out we, the level of expenditure within our region was still not yet uh, come to a global average and we are clear, still a big gap that's still left open and there was a study by the UNSCAP where we able to target if we able to just increase our expenditure within 11.11% uh, .11 percent of GDP within the global average will be achieve of a uh, Live, able to lift everyone out of poverty within 2030. That was a big uh, landmark for us to just keep moving. On this base, uh, as a Cambodian delegation, I believe that uh, we can share something. We as a country, we still are, at the moment, are still a development process of social protection at the moment, where we are slowly develop a social protection council, and now we are actually able to push forward. But however, just by using the social assistance and social protection scheme alone to respond to COVID-19 was it's unprecedented within Cambodia that we're able to address so much population that was that were able that were out there and was vulnerable for the impact of COVID-19. It's simple, easy. Uh, Cambodia, we have 10, uh, 30 percent of uh, population that are under under 18. We have the 10 percent of population over 60. Within that, we have. 10% are former worker and 50% are population may be informal worker. The former worker is a, is a bit simple. We are able to deal with economic and take care of that and uh, run the scheme slowly, develop as a plan. And that's part of the plan of investing further expen expen expenditure within the social protection framework. 
the informal worker that we are having problems to deal with is was the simple uh, is, a, is a problem that we have to be faced. So from there, I think Cambodia was able to just respond quickly because we were able to have set a scheme where just the COVID-19 happened alone. In, two, in one month, we were able to push out a cash transfer program that actually hit, that able to support a lowest quantile of the population in terms of income, almost 20% of the population. Uh, delegation where, of uh, Cambodia, just hold on for a minute. I think we have lost the translation. Is it okay now? Yeah, thank you, no, Madam Chair, but there is no translation to Russian language. <laughs> okay, I can go now. I can go on. Thank you. So, just that alone, Cambodia was able to support 20, almost uh, 3 million of their population out of 15 million. Just uh, be able to have a good scheme, a good program that's ready to go. So, from this, I'd just like to share uh, this experience to, to uh, most of our, our member state here. So, for me today, uh, as a delegation of Cambodia, it is almost important that the Asia Pacific nation work together in solidarity in order not to not only combat the virus and the self impact, but it to also ensure a much needed economic revival to assist people to return to employment and to ensure their physical and mental well being, along with the continuing the path of development upon which all nations have successfully embarked. We need to maintain our 2030 poverty elevation, elevation target. There's no one left behind. And continue to develop effective program of social protection and social assistance for all people within our region. Therefore, Cambodia is delighted to endorse the ESCAP agenda item for this conference being the draft action plan strength regional cooperation on social protection, along with endorsing proposed Asia Pacific indicative a framework of the program and action plan uh, conference on population and development. Thank you, Madam Chair. I thank the distinguished delegation of Cambodia, particularly uh, for sharing valuable thoughts and also leading uh, the consultations to bring this whole process uh, to where we are today. And I now have the pleasure of inviting the distinguished delegation of Bangladesh uh, Bangladesh is going to join us virtually and to be followed by Armenia and Afghanistan once again uh, online. So, uh, good morning, Bangladesh. Floor is yours. Bangladesh, you have the floor. Bangladesh, uh, you are kindly requested to unmute your microphone and then speak. Hello, uh, yeah. Honorable yes. Madam Chair, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Honorable Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the chance to say something. Uh, actually, the government of Bangladesh is strongly committed uh, to reducing poverty, improving human development, and reducing inequality. This commitment is reflected uh, in Vision 2021, the Perspective Plan 2010 to 2021, and in the seventh five-year plan uh, from uh, financial year 16 to 2020. For achieving the above goals, the government approved the National Social Security Strategy Plan in 2015 uh, for 2015 to 2025. Uh, 
At present, the government of Bangladesh is implementing about 145 programs under the social safety net program. Bangladesh, uh, we lost you. Uh, Yo. Bangladesh. Programs. We have a different allowances and financial aid. Allowance, allowance for wizarded women, allowance for the persons, stipend program for students and disabilities, support for the development of disadvantaged people, support for the improvement of lives of migrated people, provide assistance to the poor sick patients in the hospital, providing financial support for cancer, kidney, liver cirrhosis, paralyzed stroke, and birth congenital heart diseases, providing financial assistance for improving the lives of key workers, grant and aid to increase the capacity of voluntary organizations, uh, we have some It looks that uh, there is a technique. baby home. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, Madam Chair. Hello. Please go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we have a child protection program like daycare center, training and rehabilitation center for destitute children, government sheltered home, we have safe home for women and girls. We have uh, we have some protection and development program for the persons with disabilities, including neurodevelopmental disabilities. A disability detection survey program, uh, arranging job fair for PWDs, national special education center, and training for a special school teacher, training and rehabilitation program for PWDs, institution um, for mentally retarded children schools for visually impaired schools for hearing impaired so we have uh, we have now uh, 145 programs uh, for uh, social uh, development uh, so our uh, government the present government under the visionary leadership of honorable prime minister sheikh hasina has laid the foundation for future prosperity during this period the poverty rate came down 20.5 percent in 2019 from 31.5 percent in 2010. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, so I I want to again uh, thank you to Eska for arranging this program. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bangladesh. And in between, I think we experienced some technical difficulties. So uh, you have the opportunity to upload your statements, the full statements onto the website. Uh, and thank you very much for sharing the uh, very wide experience on the national uh, level. I now have the uh, honor to invite the distinguished delegation of uh, Afghanistan, who is going to connect us online to be followed by the delegation of Armenia, if they are connected still. Are they, are they there? Armenia took it out of the request list, but okay. they were first. Uh, so um, I will I will invite uh, Afghanistan because I see Afghanistan connected and. Uh, Thereafter, if Armenia is still uh, willing to take the floor, they will have the floor. Uh, Afghanistan, good morning. Are you with us?
Afghanistan, please go ahead. You have the floor. Please unmute your mic and take the floor. In the interest of uh, time, uh, I will see whether Armenia is connected. Or maybe until Armenia gets ready, I will uh, probably invite the distinguished delegation of Bhutan, which is also going to be connected to us online. Bhutan, good morning. Uh, you have the floor, Bhutan. Uh, Bhutan, uh, please unmute your microphone. Can someone uh, from the Secretariat connect them and uh, follow up whether Bhutan can connect us at this point? Hello? Yes, Bhutan. Good morning. We can hear you. You have the floor, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning to everyone. On behalf of delegates from Bhutan, we support the action plan to strengthen the regional cooperation on social protection in the Asia Pacific, which is vital to achieve the sustainable development goals. In Bhutan, recognizing the need to protect and ensure health and well-being of its people, at all times, the Constitution of Kingdom of Bhutan mandated the state to provide free basic public health care and the education to its people. With the aim to improve demand for utilization of mother and child health care services and improve the access to health care services in the difficult to reach settings in the spirit of universal health coverage, the royal government of Bhutan also endorsed the policy of conditional cash transfer to the underprivileged mother, pregnant mother and uh, when mothers and pregnant women. In the context of COVID-19, the health system has ensured the provision of essential and emergency healthcare services to the people. Bhutan has also initiated numerous social protection schemes under His Majesty's Relief Fund to protect the well-being of our experience in responding to the pandemic in Indonesia offers certain lessons to our public service delivery that we would like to share with the forum. First, social protection measure will continue to remain critically important in the medium term. Having said that, developing an effective mechanism and expand investment on unified database uh, will be uh, critical. Investment in this sector is, is expected to produce valid, integrated, inclusive, and disaggregated data on social welfare and development. Second, at present, the COVID-19 responses have been focused on social assistance and social safety nets with limited intervention with respect to social care services. In the medium term, we'll need to strengthen institutional capacity, including in terms of educate and well-trained human resources to deliver benefits and social care services. Engagement with other relevant stakeholders providing social care and services should also be enhanced. Third, expand social protection system and make system more responsive to the future crisis will be important components of the recovery phase, helping economies to build back better as well as building resilience of the people. And the last, it is vital to push toward digital solution in the social protection delivery. Digitalizing social system is expected to address challenges in terms of communicating entitlements 
distributing cash or food due to limitation on movement and large gathering and reaching geographically isolated areas. Furthermore, we would like to propose an amendment to the point six of the draft action plan in which changing family structures become one of the race contexts. If we take a look on the social outlook report, it is aging population that is changing family structures and become the factor of inequality that should be addressed by the provision of social protection. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished delegation of India for your valuable thoughts, particularly on uh, the uh, importance of, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the distinguished delegation of Indonesia for your valuable thoughts and uh, particularly for highlighting the importance of digitalizing the services for delivery and also capacity building on human resource. Uh, I have the honor of inviting uh, Afghanistan, the distinguished delegation of Afghanistan. Please uh, unmute your mic and you have the floor. It looks we still have some technical problem in getting connected to the distinguished delegation of India. Uh, so, sorry, I'm sorry. The delegation of Afghanistan. Uh, so uh, let me now invite the representative of the International Labour Organization to make a statement. You have the floor, sir. Madam Chair, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me the opportunity to provide ILO's perspective on the importance of regional cooperation on social protection. The COVID-19 crisis has revealed again the devastating socio-economic consequences of systemic shocks in the absence of universal and adequate social protection. Recovery will only be sustained and future crises mitigated if countries progressively build comprehensive and shock-responsive social protection systems, including flaws, in line with human rights and ILO social security standards. Social security is a human right. However, about half of the region's population has no social protection coverage, and only a handful of countries have comprehensive social protection systems with relatively broad coverage. Workers in the informal economy and women are overrepresented among those excluded. Workers, employers, and governments are confronted by these long-standing challenges, compounded by other challenges arising, including from climate change, public health emergencies, population aging, labor migration, and digitalization. The responsiveness of social protection systems to life and work transitions and systemic shocks is an essential complement to employment policies to respond better to the call of the ILO Centenary Declaration for a human-centered future of work. To make the right to social security a reality for all, Madam Chair, it is necessary to first develop national social protection strategies underpinned by political and budgetary commitments and legal frameworks. Second, implement both contributory and non-contributory schemes that are gender responsive and protect people from life cycle risks and covariate systemic shocks. And third, improve the financial and administrative governance of social protection systems. In this context, the importance of regional cooperation cannot be overestimated. It needs to be recognized as a key development cooper cooperation modality for the promotion of social protection for all 
and a strategic vehicle for promoting mutually beneficial learning and cooperation in support of the 2030 Agenda. Therefore, the ILO stands ready to support the action plan, both at the regional and national levels. At the UN ASCAP and the ILO, we share a common view on the critical importance of social protection. That is why we have again joined forces to produce the regional report, the protection we want, social outlook for Asia and Pacific, which was recently launched on the 15th of October. This report clearly strengthens the regional evidence base and moves the agenda forward on social protection in the region. Madam Chair, the basic commitment to work together at the regional and country levels so that sustainable development and social protection is available to all, with no one left behind, is the only way forward in our challenging times. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of ILO for its valuable thoughts and all the support for social protection measures uh, for member states as well as for the UN system, within UN system. I uh, want to make an apology to the distinguished delegation of Japan. Uh, uh, we missed uh, the uh, inscription in the speaker list. Uh, so you have the floor, uh, distinguished delegation of Japan. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for the opportunity to, to speak. Uh, my delegation at this point uh, would like to uh, uh, ask a couple of questions regarding the uh, uh, regional platform uh, as contained in the Part 23B of the report uh, SCAP CSD 2020-1. The first question would be uh, uh, if the uh, uh, Secretary can pro uh, provide a little bit more uh, clarification or further information on the how the, uh, the, uh, this platform would look like, how does it operate? For example, what is the size and frequency of the meeting, and what will be the expected uh, outcome of such meetings, and how that uh, such uh, outcome will be shared or reported to the uh, uh, Committee on Social Development or to the uh, uh, Commission of SCAP. And how does it work under this particular uh, circumstance of the uh, COVID-19 situation? Second question is the uh, how the uh, the uh, uh, how the process forward would look like. The uh, the uh, what is written here is uh, development of a platform. Does the secretary come, will come back to the uh, uh, in any form to the intergovernmental body to seek uh, support or endorsement of the modality and or 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 does it the, uh, intend to establish and uh, initiate its, uh, its, uh, its facilitation or uh, knowledge sharing? Uh, lastly, the, how the, uh, the Secretary will support the, uh, such a platform? Uh, the, can, can the Secretary manage the, uh, its support within the uh, current level of the uh, man capacity uh, or the other uh, physical capacity? Uh, all the existing uh, capacity of the Secretariat. Uh, these are the questions I'd like to uh, hear from the Secretariat at the, at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the distinguished delegation of Japan. I would now like to invite the Secretariat uh, to make clarification on those uh, points that was raised. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I thank the distinguished delegate of Japan for asking um, um, uh, the questions which are uh, very relevant in a way that when we, uh, the development of a platform here is about the regional platform is seen as something that's, that's very evolving. I mean, we want to use existing platforms as suggested, for example, by, by the distinguished delegate of Russian Federation, perhaps using the different existing meetings that we have in order to to, to discuss social protection. Use the existing platforms and look at it consolidatedly as a regional platform. So we're not looking at developing a new platform, but perhaps using our existing meetings and other, ex whether it be expert group meetings or intergovernmental meetings, in order to share experiences on social protection. And I would like to um, indicate that there is no, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, the, the, 
The work plan is envisaged to be implemented within existing budgetary and human resources using we, we are going to kind of consolidate and work in a way that we address social protection in the context of all our activities. So we do not imagine building a comprehensive new, pro but I think the, con uh, the idea here is to use existing platforms and the term regional platform is to use existing platforms to really discuss uh, social protection more intensively and deeply. So I hope that addresses his concern. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tata. I would now like to give the floor uh, to the distinguished delegation of Iran. You have the floor. Yeah. Iran is going to join us virtually. Please uh, release yes. the mic. Yes. Thank you. Hello. Greeting from Tehran. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the floor. Um, we believe that the numerous natural and human designs make very essential to work on uh, certain resilient societies. Coronavirus pandemic made clear that resilience is one of the most greatest national challenges in recent decades. Since the bringing, uh, since the being of Corona uh, crisis in early 2002, uh, uh, Iran, like many other countries, suddenly faced the challenge of the providing medical supplies and equipment outbreak to prevent the prevalence and treatment of the disease. The unilateral coercive measures by U.S. have negatively affected the process of mapping and combating the prevalence and control of coronavirus and public health in Iran. The devastating impact of unilateral coercive measures on uh, Iran economy and society increased pressure of Iranian citizens, particularly poor and fragile population. In this situation, we reiterate social protection framework should promote regional and international collaboration and cooperation with respective two principles of national ownership and governance each member state. In this context, monitoring and reporting of social protection indicators are inherent responsibilities of each governments. Thank you very much. I thank the distinguished delegation of Iran. May I now ask whether there are any further delegations from member states, associate members who wants to take the floor? looks it's not the case. I now wish to give the floor to the um, civil society representative uh, from the uh, International Federation of Social Workers. The IFSW, you have the floor. Yeah, please unmute the mic. We cannot hear you. Hello? Yeah, good morning. You have the floor. Good morning. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity. I represent the International Federation of Social Workers, which is the global professional body for social workers. With over 141 member countries representing over 3 million social workers globally, we are on the front lines of human rights and social protection with a shared commitment to human rights self-determination and social justice. We commend the, the UN, SCAP and the committee for recognising social protection as one of the core strategies for addressing inequality and also achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the SDGs. As social workers, we are committed to working with the United Nations to ensure that every individual, group and community has the supports they need to meet their full potential. 
Uh, I would like to address just two key issues. Uh, first, the need for all governments in the region to assure people have access to competent social protection systems. And second, the important role of social workers in relation to the action plan. For social workers, social security is an essential human right enshrined in the Universal Declaration, and UN member states have an obligation to provide an adequate level of well-being and social support for all. The region is dealing with a once-in-a-generation pandemic and the worsening impact of climate change. Prior to COVID-19, the region's investment in social protection was already lower than the global average, resulting in 60% of the population remaining vulnerable. COVID-19 has only worsened the situation, and this is why the action plan is so important. Governments must invest in social protection as a comprehensive system contributes to the reduction of poverty, reduces inequalities, contributes to social cohesion, and lays the base for a socially, environmentally, and economically sustainable future. Uh, for social workers, social protection systems must be understood as instruments for social transformation, democracy, and creating socially and environmentally just societies. Social workers are essential workers, and it is the key profession associated with the implementation of social protection systems. Every day across the Asia Pacific region, there are hundreds of thousands of social workers working to assure that everyone's basic human rights are protected. As social workers, we are important partners for the successful implementation of the proposed action plan. Social workers bring their direct practice skills and knowledge to work with people who are marginalised and excluded and advocate for inclusive and supportive societies that address structural, social and cultural barriers. We see the daily and devastating realities of support systems that discriminate and blame people for circumstances that are completely outside of their control. Social protection systems will only be effective if they are guided by collaboration and cooperation and grounded in structural and systemic reform. Therefore, we commend the Committee for the Action Plan and as social workers renew our call for all countries in the region to commit to greater collaboration and immediate and significant action to assure that no one is left behind. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to IFSW for uh, sharing the thoughts from as I understand, also representing several other civil society members. We just uh, recognize the distinguished delegation of Japan wishing to connect online. So the delegation of Japan, you have the floor. the delegation of Japan uh, believe that it is on agenda item two that you wish to take the floor. If so, you have the floor. Distinguished delegation of Japan, uh, are you connected and uh, wishing to take the floor at this point? There's a request on the uh, CUDO platform. Please unmute your microphone.
uh, distinguished delegation of Japan. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Perhaps the, uh, the question that may come from the uh, 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 Dr. Hayashi will be uh, relating to, to my previous question about the, um, how, the, the, how the outcome and, uh, the, uh, uh, will be shared, how the, uh, uh, the outcome will be, uh, uh, how the, um, the content or action plan is monitored. So I think that element uh, may not be specifically addressed, I guess. So uh, if the secretary can provide some additional information, thank you. Thank you very much uh, to the distinguished delegation of Japan for this uh, clarification. And may I now request the secretariat uh, to provide some additional information uh, regarding the question. Yes, I, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think it's been repeatedly stressed that the action plan is something that's uh, supposed to be a guiding framework for national actions. And it's voluntary and to uh, shape to national circumstances. So understandably, the review on assessment of progress is going to be done through the sharing of experiences in various platforms. We have also the, the voluntary uh, uh, countries which are interested would be only on a voluntary basis could share the national ex experiences in the form of a progress report, which at, could be shared at future sessions of the Committee on Social Development. So each country that wishes to say, would say, okay, these are the things that we've done. And in future sessions of the Committee on Social Development would be the platform where, where the progress made on implementation of this, of this regional action plan uh, would be monitored and all on a voluntary basis. So that's my um, response, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much for the Secretariat. I hope that clarifies uh, the question uh, raised by distinguished delegation of Japan. Uh, distinguished delegate, delegates, uh, I think we have uh, almost come to the allocated time, but still I wish to uh, ask whether there are any more uh, member states uh, who wish to take the floor at this point. It seems not the case. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, from the discussions you have highlighted the centrality of social protection in responding to ongoing and emerging challenges facing our region. I also believe that many delegates have expressed their support for the action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection, which has been presented for our consideration. Should there be no weaves to the contrary, I propose for endorsement the draft action plan to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia and the Pacific as put forward in document SCAP slash CSD slash 2020 slash 1. It, it seems there are no uh, additional comments at this point. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as I hear no weaves to the contrary, Oh, sorry. The distinguished delegation of Iran, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, with respect to what my colleague from the distinguished delegation of Japan just mentioned, and I have uh, totally listened to what was the reply from the secretary. But uh, even though it is mentioned that it's going to be the voluntary, under the voluntary basis of the, I mean, the, or the monitoring, but uh, another concern that comes to my mind would be, so how it's going to be the endorsement, because we, we are not uh, doing uh, some negotiations here, and unfortunately, out of numerous technical problems that not all of the UNSCAP members are in the hall or their I mean, representatives can uh, hear us 
from the CUDA connection. So I'm wondering how we could endorse anything. I mean, either this platform or what, what, what others. So uh, I do think it's better to uh, use another wording for endorsement, or at least let it to put it on the, the final day. I mean, the, the probably, I mean, tr I mean, the secretariat, I mean, and the other colleagues here can come to the, another, I mean, a more c comprehensive wording that c could uh, show the importance of the issue while understanding the situation that we are, because that's all. Thank you. nature of it and its applicability as per national circumstances. Uh, I, I thank the distinguished delegation of uh, Iran for its comments. So may I just uh, place before the distinguished delegations that when in making the endorsement that we use a language uh, to reflect noting the uh, voluntary nature of the uh, social protection action plan as well as uh, that it be applicable in the nationally applicable context that the in, that the action plan is endorsed so if the, a language to that effect is reflected in the final decision would that satisfy uh, the general agreement of uh, the sixth session of the social committee Distinguished delegation of Iran. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so, because uh, two times it was mentioned that it's going to be under the voluntary basis, so I do think it could be um, a good suggestion if we could add this important phrase that Secretary twice had mentioned it under under the voluntary basis for both of the documents that we are going to speak about this and the other one as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, it's well noted and I would uh, propose that the Secretariat reflect these comments uh, in the decision of the committee to be presented in the draft report of the committee in agenda item 5 which is to be taken up later. Are there any further comments from the delegations? It seems uh, not the case. Distinguished delegates. Uh, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, as I hear no further views to the contrary, I declare the action plan to strengthen Regional Cooperation on Social Protection in Asia and the Pacific endorsed uh, by acclamation uh, subjected to the uh, comments made earlier. Thank you very much and also I take this opportunity to thank the uh, interpreters for their service and also to the Secretariat. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have now reached the end of the time allotted for this agenda item. Thank you very much once again for your informative statements which have demonstrated the need to strengthen regional cooperation on social protection in Asia and the Pacific. 
we will now adjourn for a break and reconvene at 2 p.m. Bangkok time to consider agenda item 3. Thank you very much.